Hi, today's problem is pseudohypertrophic muscular dystrophy is a disorder that causes gradual deterioration of the muscles. It is seen only in boys born to apparently normal parents and usually results in death in the early teens. And here is a three questions. Is a pseudohypertrophic uh, uh, muscular dystrophy caused by dominant or recessive allele? Is it inheritance sex linked or autosomal? And how do you know, explain why this disorder is always seen in boys and never in girls. So, uh, humans are deployed, so we have uh, two sets of chromosomes, one that we inherited from father, another from the mother side. So, imagine that there can be three different conditions. For example, we may be, have uh, capital A, capital A, so homozygous dominant condition, we may have uh, capital A, small a, heterozygous condition, and small a, small a, uh, homozygous recessive condition. So, uh, we also told that uh, uh, parents are normal, and uh, that means that we can exclude uh, this homozygous dominant and we also can exclude that parents are homozygous recessive for this uh, condition because uh, if this uh, disease would be dominant so this uh, would exclude this because one of the parents would uh, show this disease and this also exclude uh, this condition because if one of the parents would be um, homozygous recessive, such parent would also uh, express this disease. And what we left with uh, heterozygous form, and from the first glance, this is, could be our answer, because for example, if this is going to be uh, male, for example, and this is female, and we would draw a Punnett square, And here we would have homozygous dominant, here uh, heterozygous, heterozygous here, and uh, homozygous recessive here. And um, all this, if it is going to be uh, homozygous recessive disease or just recessive disease, it would be only expressed here in one child. And uh, parents that would be heterozygous for this disease and would have one of the chromosome normal that would balance the other chromosome and this is would be dominant condition over the recessive and uh, gene would be recessive and should be uh, uh, present in two copies in order um, to uh, such a disease uh, can be expressed and uh, so, two parents would be normal and uh, they can produce uh, a child that uh, can express such disease. But we can exclude this also because it doesn't explain uh, why such a disease only can be expressed in uh, boys but, and never in girls. So, what we left is only one possibility that this is sex-related disease. And um, what I want to start with is that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, uh, 46 chromosomes altogether, and 22 of them would be autosomes. And one pair of chromosomes would be sex chromosomes. So, um, now we can solve this problem uh, in three different ways and find which, uh, which way would produce the pattern uh, that we are given in the problem. For example, uh, we may have uh, one parent uh, that is male to be x, y. Uh, two normal uh, 
chromosomes, one is X, another one is Y, and we also may have a female that would be X normal and X uh, defective. So uh, on this, uh, not the whole chromosome would be defective, but uh, one gene on this chromosome would be defective. So uh, what the pattern such Punnett square would produce? So here we would have normal female with two normal chromosomes. Here we would have normal male. And here we would have heterozygous female, just like a mother here. Uh, and such a female wouldn't show or express this disease phenotypically. Uh, such a female would be carrier. Uh, because uh, such female have one chromosome that is normal and this balance uh, one chromosome that is uh, defective. And here uh, would be a male with one defective X chromosome and one normal Y chromosome. So as you see here we will have um, only female, uh, only male that would be um, that would uh, show this disease and uh, about 50% of the males would be affected and 50% wouldn't be uh, affected and 100% of the girls wouldn't be affected but this 50% uh, of them would be carriers and here 50% of the boys would be normal. So this explains why uh, it is sex related and it is X chromosomes, uh, X chromosome related. But you may also ask why it's not uh, Y chromosome related. And here's uh, my uh, another explanation. Just imagine that this is normal X and defective Y chromosome and of course this is, would be uh, father side and here we would have normal X X chromosome for the mother side and now let's see it looks like uh, it also may help uh, answer us our question so we would have two normal girls here and uh, two boys that would have a defective Y chromosome and normal X chromosome but uh, you know what the problem is that in and 100 percent of the boys would uh, express this disease but we have one problem here uh, this uh, parent that is male should express this disease but we told that both parents are uh, apparently normal and don't uh, express this disease so this give us uh, only one possibility that this disease only sex uh, linked and X chromosome link it. So this is our correct answer. Our disease is X linked recessive and you probably may have the last question how do I know that this is recessive and not dominant and take a better look here if uh, this would be dominant um, disease so f this female also would express it. So 50% of the children, no matter what is their sex, would be would express this disease. 50% of the girls and 50% of the boys. But uh, we told that on this disease only expressed in the boys, so this is the only way that this disease and this defective gene on the X chromosome would be uh, recessive. So this is all for today. I hope that you were able to learn something new today. Please subscribe to my channel. I post new videos almost every day. Goodbye.